Let's get to the other Logan Paul situation, which is day two of Elon's securities fraud lawsuit. The judge is saying the court took on great pains to make this happen. I'm not going to accept 150 pages of stuff every night, the judge said, of objections. Are you devoting any other time to other cases? Yeah, I didn't think so. Right on cue, Elon is tweeting. The judge just finished talking about how he's tired of them objecting to the New York Times article. How many times do I have to rule on that, the judge said. Elon Musk immediately tweets right on cue, says media wants to control what you know, which is why citizen journalism is essential. Of course, the irony of this statement in and of itself, which got 96,000 likes, is the reality that Elon Musk has banned a bunch of actual citizen journalists who happen to be on the left. When Elon Musk talks about citizen journalism, he's talking about people that will do his bidding. He's talking about people that live in like Malaysia, but then tweet about uh, Oregon, Portland, Oregon every goddamn day, you know, like Ian Miles wrong. Um, that's who he's talking about. He has quite literally destroyed essential citizen journalists. Uh, one of the uh, more popular ones was, again, a citizen journalist who a citizen journalist who who was tracking his jets and tracking other jets, as a matter of fact. If you remember, that was a big part of this saga. He also literally didn't just take down citizen journalists. He took down journalist journalists. Like he, he took down like Chad Loader, many other anarchist writers, many other anarchist, uh, you know, reporters. But he also took down like, you know, people who write for <laughs> people who write for Washington Post. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, it's just he just means whoever doesn't like him. That's it. Now, if you're familiar with today's topics, uh, topic, Elon Musk got Tesla tangled up in a securities fraud lawsuit for tweeting this. The funding was not, in fact, secured. I'm considering taking Tesla private at 420. Funding secured. Some of you may recall the SEC fined him $40 million in, a 2018, in 2018 as a result and forced him to step down as chair of Tesla's board. Now he's getting sued by investors who own stock over a 10-day period, claiming the tweet costs investors billions. In April, the judge presiding over this case determined that most tweets were false. Now we have a jury that will rule on the extent of any damages, whether Musk acted deliberately and whether the statements affected Tesla's share prices. Last but not least, Elon argued he wouldn't get a fair trial in San Francisco due to local negativity in the Bay Area and press coverage around Twitter acquisition. He asked the judge to relocate to West Texas instead. Obviously, the judge said no. This man... Sure does have his priorities straight today. The World Economic Forum should control the world, says Elon Musk. We're on recess, which is giving me time to catch up uh, to speed and perhaps giving you time to think more poll ideas. So I do find this uh, hilarious that he tweeted this because, like, he is the World Economic Forum. You are literally the World Economic Forum. You are, like, who do you think the World Economic Forum is defending? The jury was just brought in. The judges apologize for the late start. Opening statements are now starting with the plaintiff's team kicking it off. There is no dispute that Elon Musk lied, the plaintiff's lawyer said. They're reading his tweet out loud now. It's beyond dispute that funding was not secured, the plaintiff's lawyer said. The plaintiff's lawyer has been really hammering home that Elon knew that, his, that what he was tweeting was a lie. Funding secured past tense, he says. 2,400 news articles over 10 days had been published about this funding, he said. How could investors know the funding was not secured? The market believed funding and investor support was confirmed, he says. Late on August 16th, the New York Times paper a record, he says, published a detailed on-the-record interview about the tweets. One plaintiff is a self-made man, his lawyer says. He's been trading by himself with his own money. He believed in Tesla. He'll describe how his life savings for the last 50 years almost wiped out due to Elon's tweets. Now we're switching over to Elon's team. They're bringing up a calendar to keep track of the dates, the 10-day period. Elon Musk was considering taking Tesla private. That was indisputably true, and they cannot prove otherwise. But now we're in a court discussing whether it was a fraud. It did not materially matter to the market, he says. How can you claim that? How can you claim that it did not materially matter when he is the key man? Okay, so everything he tweets materially matters to the market. But, like, this wasn't even just him smoking weed on the Joe Rogan experience, which, like, lowered stock uh, uh, prices. This was him saying something about the stock itself. It is such a clear-cut instance of stock manipulation. I am so... I don't know how you can defend this. Like, this, this literally is... This is the textbook definition. Like, he just very clearly did the textbook definition of the thing he's not supposed to do, and his lawyers are like, aha, actually? Yeah, no, you're wrong about the textbook. It's insane. The fact that the financing was not an issue, most lawyer says, the only roadblock was the shareholders' approval, which was critical to the unique structure Elon was seeking to take Tesla private, a structure to protect Tesla shareholders. When Elon revealed the truth, the stock went up. In real fraud cases, when the truth is revealed, the stock goes down, Musk's lawyer says. 
The tweet communicated a basic truth. He was actively working towards taking Tesla private at 420, the lawyer says. Shareholder approval was the only thing keeping Tesla from going private. It wasn't because of a lack of funding. This is literally identical to the Logan Paul rug pull. Like, in so many ways. I'm losing it. It is such a hilarious instance. It is such a hilarious, like, scam being conducted at the highest echelon of society versus, like, mid-tier, uh, mid-tier wealthy guy uh, uh, doing a scam to, like, uh, other suckers. Okay. Anyway, uh, Musk lawyer is now explaining that Tesla's pathway to profitability, you build a sports car to make money, take that money to build a more affordable car, and then take that money into building a more affordable car, except that's a wonderful way to explain profitability. However, you never built the sports car to make the money to begin with. You just took money to build the sports car. And then like, where is that sports car? And then you built the affordable car, sure. And then you took that money to build a more affordable car. It's no longer affordable as affordable. Musk team was literally sleeping in the factory to get this done. He adds, they fought their way to 5K vehicles a week by July. Um, this accomplished this goal. The accomplishment was to allow... Uh, okay, let's continue. The master plan they're describing is the OG Roadster, the Model S, the Model 3. They did that. The, ro the sports car is the Roadster. They built 2,500. Okay, well, 2,500 of the Roadsters did uh, make it eventually. Anyway, he adds, they fought their way to 5K vehicles by week. Uh, a week... Uh, about a week uh, by July, Tesla accomplished that goal. This accomplishment allowed Musk to think about going private. He had reasons. Wild swings in the stock price were a distraction for the employees who were long-term holders of Tesla stock. His lawyer at Saudi Arabia had the kingdom's money to pursue Elon Musk and Tesla. Musk's argument in court is that Saudi Arabia's public investment fund agreed to provide the financing. His connection to Saudi Arabia is so wild. There was a meeting to take Tesla private with Yasir Elon. There was a handshake. Later, Elon sends an email to the Tesla board to take Tesla private. F420 a share. Musk had one concern, and it was for his shareholders, lawyer says. Musk contacts several for financing, lawyer says. Founder of Dell, Michael Dell, Egon Durbin, CEO of Silver Lake to advise Dell, Dan Dees, and Goldman Sachs star banker. And the Financial Times breaks the news that Saudi Arabia, this country rich in oil, now owns Tesla, a clean energy company, his lawyer says. Musk was on his way to the airport when he saw the leak, which came from that handshake meeting I mentioned above. What can Musk do, his lawyer says in response. He tweets his thoughts quickly. Because of the leak... And Musk is thinking aloud. He rushed, lawyer says. In his rushed, reckless state, he used the wrong words. He should have said, funding shouldn't be an issue. We met with PI fee. Funding wasn't an issue, the lawyer says. He just chose the wrong words. He hadn't planned to tweet this. It was a split-second decision. Guys, his crackpot team of lawyers got him off a defamation suit by saying, file is actually slang in South Africa, okay? He very openly claimed that one of the divers in that cave was a file and doubled down on it, and then when he was sued for defamation, they said, oh, well, file is a South African joking term, and they got him off that defamation suit, okay? They've done this before, and they will continue to do it. And in most instances, the, the legal system will let you do it. It wasn't a deceptive plan, the lawyer says. He was trying to quickly get in front of it. Imperfect or not, disclosure was a better route. These tweets were informal, sporadic thoughts, the lawyer says. There were technical inaccuracies like, like inaccuracies like using the word secured and only. These technical inaccuracies didn't matter to the market. That's insane. No, that is the entire point. What a defense, dude. The entire defense argument is like, oh, he just didn't mean it really. Like, and also it didn't matter. Well, there would be no lawsuit if it didn't matter, would there? I guess like undermining the main point of the lawsuit is a, is an effective legal strategy. Uh, only when paired up with, oh, we were just kidding, Your Honor. If the market knew all the backdrop we've been discussing, not in a short form tweet, it wouldn't have had, it wouldn't have made a material difference to a reasonable investor. Most lawyers said, when the market does react, it's the possibility of a transaction, not the throwaway funding secured. They are trying to argue that no reasonable investor would believe that that was possible. Basically, the saying, basically saying that plaintiffs were irrational. Why? First of all, they are. They're Tesla buyers. Like, not Tesla the vehicle buyers, but Tesla the stock buyers. Okay? So, technically, they are irrational, thinking that Tesla's valuation is, like, normal. Okay? But that kind of takes the market, uh, that, that kind of keeps the market afloat. Now, none of that matters, ultimately, because even if you're not a buyer of Tesla, other, uh, you know, or, or a firm believer in Tesla, you would still look at that tweet and go, oh, he definitely did. Whether or not the plaintiffs or whether or not the purchasers of the stock were irrational doesn't change the reality that, like, he definitely made a statement that manipulated the stock price, and it was a falsehood. How can you just do this and then try and maybe even successfully, maybe even 
successfully get away with it? I don't understand. Twitter haikus, they don't move the market, his lawyer says. Yes, they do. Tesla issued a blog post with further details. Bro, this dude smoked weed and it moved the market, okay? Of course, his open statement about a stock, about his own stock, is going to move the market. I envision I'm trying to accomplish the future is very bright, the blog post says. This is the, the double-edged sword, okay? This is the double-edged sword, and this is a double entendre on top of the double-edged sword of Elon Musk being both the key man and also simultaneously benefiting greatly from all the dumb shit that he's capable of saying on this platform, on, on every other platform as a con man. When he says some crazy, like, fully self-driving is, uh, you know, something that you can pay into and, and, uh, and automate your vehicle in that way without really fearing that you will cause an eight-car pileup in a tunnel and then the stock price goes up or any number of different things that you don't actually follow through on benefit from that. Your stock prices benefit from that. You can even lie to people and say Tesla is actually a tech company. It is not a car company. It's a tech company. And, you know, your stock prices will benefit from that. Well, this is the inverse of that problem. If you make a fraudulent tweet and that moves the market in a direction that you wanted it to move, you're going to turn around and face consequences for it. In the article, there's a throwaway line from an unidentified source that the funding was far from secure. Well, there was no funding. There was none. So it's not a throwaway line. Another tweet from Musk, right as this is happening. Why did American media go from questioning the state and speaking truth to power to doing their bidding? When he sent this tweet, the, his mind was pure. His intentions were sincere. And he was acting in good faith, his lawyer says. It was all done for the mission. All done for the shareholders. It was all done in good faith. There was no fraud. End of Elon Musk's lawyer's opening statement. We're now breaking for 15 minutes. Plaintiff Glenn Littleton is taking the stand. He's 71 years old from Kansas City, Missouri. He bought almost 100% of his portfolio. Oh my God, this guy went 100% of his portfolio in the Tesla. Oh God. It makes it so hard for me to feel bad for these guys, man. It's just like, I don't want to victim blame, but God damn, dude. What are you doing, my man? What the hell are you doing?